Fruity. Fruity. and all was well in the world. Taras Shevchenko. In front of me, I got uh, the city hall building, the Ratusha. Mm. I wanted to tell you a little story and talk about uh, a tobacco. Um, so, many of you who are familiar with Scott at Aristocob.com, shout out to the beginning of Corn Cob Pipe Month. Um, know that from time to time for work he is in Germany as he was recently and I believe whenever he's there he tries to stop by and pick up a certain blend called blend number six from a local tobacconist and uh, he refers to it loving, lovingly as his Fruit Loop blend <laughs> and um, when I was in uh, Germany not too long ago for my last round of operations. Um, I reached out to Scott and I told him, I said, hey, where can I pick up that blend at? He said, well, uh, it's in this place called uh, Nagold, Nagold, I don't know, and um, he gave me the name of the shop. And so I looked it up and I thought, shoot, it's only about a half hour out of my way from a little trip that... Uh, we took before my operation and so I thought to myself well if I get the chance I gotta stop by and check it out and um, so long story short uh, we're on the way back from a little weekend trip um, to Bowdoin Sea and we're on our way we're on our way and I'm sort of in a hurry because um, gotta get the car rental back by like five o'clock and you know things happened, I had to stop for gas, had to get groceries and do some stuff and I realized, ooh, we don't have a lot of time. And then I remembered on the way, oh my gosh, I forgot about stopping at Nagold and picking up that tobacco. And uh, so quickly brought it up on the GPS and I was like, oh my gosh, the turn, if I want to go, is like in three or four kilometers. So I remembered just in time and I look, at, take a look at the watch and I'm like, hmm. 20 minutes from the freeway, 20 minutes back, that'll give me about 10 minutes to find the shop and grab the tobacco, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I thought, what the heck, let's try it, you gotta live, you know, a little bit, so, um, yeah, <laughs> I decided to turn off the freeway, and I was like, we're gonna do this, <laughs> and my wife was like, you couldn't have told me earlier? <laughs> And um, then my my phone died, um, and I was like, "Oh no! I don't have the GPS. I don't know where the shop is in town. I don't know anything about the city. I'd never been there before." And. Um, By the way, smoking from in my... I think Scott just called this pipe the other day, this combo of pipe and stem. The, um... Shoot, what did he call it? There's the, um... Uh, 
there's the Bing's favorite pipe, and something Co Cobbing's favorite, or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I like this one. Hmm. Um, sorry for all the ums. <laughs> so, I'm just following road signs at this point. Um, and there, sure enough, here it comes. Here's Nago. I make the turn. Good thing it's a small town from what I saw. At least the center of town was pretty small. I'm driving by a bunch of one-way streets. I don't know if I'm going the right way down this one-way street or not trying to look for the store i'm constantly checking my watch oh my gosh i got like five minutes left or else this isn't gonna work i'm gonna have to call abort and just head back and um finally i see a little spot there's two parking spots one car's already parked there and there's one open and i was like sweet and i swing in and i just start walking downtown and i'm looking is the shop there no is the shop there no i'm looking for anything that's a tobacco shop nothing i'm walking i'm walking i'm like man i got like two minutes left if I don't find it, I'm gonna just have to head back. Oh man, I got like one minute left. If I can't find the shop, I'm just gonna have to head back. <laughs> and then I turn a corner, bam, there it is. And I was like, no way, this is actually gonna work out. I walked in there and I was like, um, I don't exactly know what I'm looking for. I was like, ah, there's uh, an American acquaintance of mine. He comes in here from time to time. Maybe, uh, maybe you know him, maybe you don't. He always buys a certain blend. And the guys just started staring at me. And I said, it's a house blend. So he takes me over to their, their house blends, uh, which aren't really done by them. It's just got their label on it. You know, I think someone told me it's uh, Kohlheiser and Klopp makes them. Um, anyways, I'll show you the jar and the tobacco in a little bit. And um, so I get in there and he shows them to me. And I'm like, it's very fruity blend. And then he's got like a little menu sheet because they're just numbered like one, two, three, four, five, six going down one he starts reading the description i was like no nah, that's probably not it two that's probably not it and we get down to six and i was like oh yeah i think it's number six because scott had sent me a, a photo of it once a long time ago but like i said my my phone was dead and he said yeah this one says it's really fruity and i was like that must be it so it was the last tin he had of it and i was like i'm taking it um and it was pretty cheap for uh german prices i think it was 850 euro so something around ten dollars for the tin 50 grams and I grabbed it and I was so happy it was just like last moment last second literally uh, paid the guy thanked him ran out the store started heading back to the car hmm anyways sorry I ran out had to pack another bowl and um, I, I turn the corner, and when I see my car, the rental, my heart just sinks because there's a cop standing there writing me a ticket. <laughs> I'm like, no! <laughs> this tobacco just turned into a very, very expensive tobacco. <laughs> Turns out, I had parked in a spot where I was not allowed to park. And uh, I walk up to the guy and he's like, oh, he says something in German. He's probably asking me if that was my car. And I was like, do you speak English? He's like, yeah, a little bit. And, and I, <laughs> I tried to explain to him. I'm like, sorry, um, I'm not from here. I've never been here. I was really looking around for a place to park. And I couldn't figure it out. And I saw that someone was parking here. And so I thought, well, this is a parking spot. And I'm allowed to park here. And he explained to me that it's just parking for that business. And I need a certain pass or something to be parking downtown, I guess. Mm. Oh, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I said, yeah, well, uh, am I getting a ticket or what? And he looked at me and he said, not today. And at first I didn't know what that meant. I thought maybe uh, like he would mail it to me and I wasn't getting the ticket today. And he said, no, this time we'll let you off. And then, and then he just turns around and it turns out like right behind his back. So like kitty corner to us is a parking, maybe like for 
the parking lot for like 30 or 40 cars. <laughs> He's like, there's the parking lot next time. And I was like, oh my gosh. So he just let me off with a warning. Really nice guy. I thanked him a million times. And um, then I asked him, I was like, how do I get out of this town uh, <laughs> with all your one-way streets? And uh, he showed me the way out of town. And, and I sat down and I drove off. And I'm like, ah, flying down the road, trying to get back in time. Uh, anyways, all turned out perfect. I got the last 10. I found the shop. No parking ticket. Uh, got back like 10 minutes to spare to get the, the rental back and all was well in the world uh, and then later that night I cracked open the tin fruity uh, Scott says it, tastes, it smells like fruit loops and I think fruit loops he means the cereal fruit loops mmm Now, I haven't had Fruit Loops in a long, long time, since like school days, <laughs> uh, so I can't tell. But what it reminded me of, I don't know what they're called, uh, maybe you guys can help me, but they sell um, for kids, uh, like fruit roll-ups, I think is that what they're called? You know, sort of like a fruity paste, um, not really a paste, anyways, it comes in a roll, like tape. And you unroll it, and it's like a thick, like fruit gelatin paste type deal. Mm. It smells very strongly of that to me. Sort of like a very sweet candied fruit. Um, and to be honest, I mean, it's like it smells like candy. I wasn't really sure um, how much I would like the tobacco. For me, more it was just of the experience and finding the shop and being able to smoke that same tobacco and just give it a shot you know I'm really into trying new blends and and I'm into sort of like unique exotic strange stuff mm. so I cracked it open and boy I did not like it I smoked two bowls and both of them I, weren't, I wasn't enjoying them, and it was almost like a struggle to, to finish, not really a struggle, but I wasn't enjoying them, right? Um, I think I even had a third bowl, and then I was like, oh man, I wasn't really looking forward to telling Scott that I hated his blend, and I had gone through all the trouble of getting it, you know, and... Oh, man. Anyway, so I, I closed the tin and just put it back in my bag. And then I was in the hospital for weeks in recovery. And anyways, uh, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, I went back to the tin. So it was maybe two weeks after I had first, or two months after I had first tried it. And um, I opened the tin again. And man, I can't stop smoking this stuff. Oh, mmm, so good. Mmm. It's a really decent blend, and um, in the smoke, the fruitiness hardly comes through. It comes through as a nice, uh, light sweetness into it, and every once in a while, you'll take a puff, and it'll come through, and it's like a nice surprise uh, of fruitiness, but really, for me, it even sort of reminded me, if you guys watched that video um, on Mark Bremen Pipe Smoker's channel, where we got together, and we did a video at Ronnie's place, and we tried um, one of the um, Owenland blends, the Shire blend. Well, if you didn't notice, camera change. <laughs> it's two days later now. 
My phone died on me. Mm. Came back yesterday, but it was already noon. I wasn't really in the mood. The sun was really shining. Thought I'd try it again today. Okay, well. Ah, it was a rough morning this morning. My girl was not in the mood, fighting with us, arguing with us, getting ready for school. Not the best way to start your day. Anyway. But I gotta finish this video. I gotta do it because as you see, I got about one ball left, so. <laughs> Anyways. Hmm. talk about this tobacco mmm it's good I don't know guys it's uh it's perfect for this sort of weather fall chilly weather man because um great car alarms <laughs> curse of the YTPC presenter This, this tobacco it has such a warming feeling, you know, in fall when you just sort of want to like cuddle up, uh, get in front of a fire, someplace warm, and and feel sort of that contrast. You know, it's cold outside, or maybe you're outside and your your hands are cold, and your face is cold, but you want to feel that that warmth someplace. And this blend really feels warm. Feels like a good fireplace. Feels like a log cabin. Uh, and it feels sort of woodsy. It feels really natural, and which is so strange because, man, that tin note is really, I don't want to say pungent because it's sort of a negative word, I guess, but um, powerful, man. It is strong, candy, fruity sweetness, and I'm kind of glad that it doesn't come through that way because this is, this is a real gem the way it is. There's another car alarm. Jeez. I'm getting a ton of real quality, natural tobacco flavor out of this aromatic. Just a ton of it. Which is what I really liked about that Shire blend. And as you can see from the tobacco, it's got a little, it's got quite a mix in there. Uh, I suppose there's quite a bit of Cavendish in there. A lot of Virginia, which is what really comes through. Then there's those flake pieces. Um, but predominantly it's a Virginia. It's sort of an earthy, breadsy Virginia. A little bit of that grass, but not, not sharp. Not a, like a really sharp Virginia. It's sort of deep. Um, but you can kind of play with it, which is what I really like. And it behaves so well that really you can smoke it the way you like to smoke and it still comes out as a good tobacco, at least for me, you know. I can take it slow and when you take it slow, it's a bit lighter and maybe a little, a little bit sweeter. Or at least the sweet notes pop out a little more often. the cooler you smoke it. But even if you sort of go hard on it, it gets a lot darker, a lot more earthy, a lot more sort of, uh, I don't know, sort of like forest-like. Um, hmm. But it's still so good. It's got a bit of a salty, savory flavor to it. Um, a bit smoky, like it's got a little Kentucky in there. And if you go hard on the retro hail, which I like to do, it gets really nice and peppery. Oh, right there. Mm, it's so good. So good. And it's got 
like a nice smoothing rounding sweetness to it it's not overbearing i wouldn't say it's sweet i'd say it's actually pretty on the dry side especially for for an aromatic especially for the the, the flavor profile that it says it has or, or the tin there And um, and I, I like it all around. It does really well for me. It's I I, uh, I want to smoke this a lot. Like this is the kind of blend where I can smoke a whole bowl and then pack up the next one and go at it again. I um, don't get tired of it halfway through the bowl. Uh, when it's out, I find myself sort of relighting it and sort of in denial that my bowl's out. You know, I'm like no. <laughs> No, there's still a little bit more in there. <laughs> and it smokes so well. Uh, I find it really works well for me as um, a lunting tobacco as I'm out for a walk. A lot of blends. I've wanted to do a video on lunting for a while. Lunting and wind caps, but for some reason that's just not coming to fruition yet. But um, I do a lot of smoking as I'm out walking. Um, and not all blends are suitable for lunting, right? Because um, it's the, the wind, um, and even if there's no wind, right, as you're walking, you're creating a, uh, a wind and it billows the, the, the tobacco in your, in your pipe. But this burns nice and slow and steady. But it does burn, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of smoke coming out, which I really like. Sort of on my spectrum of, of blends that produce a lot of smoke that I really like. This is above average. It's not at the very top, but um, it's more than most, and it's definitely enough for me. Yeah, it's got it's got quite a bit of pepperiness to it. Which I love to re retro hail. And uh, man, it just comes through great for me. I'm already thinking about how I can get some more of this. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I'm smoking it. I don't know what this pipe is called. Sorry, guys. It's the ca the canted uh, egg shape um, Missouri Meerschaum. I wasn't really a fan of uh, the coloring on this pipe. Um, it's so black and muddy. It looks like someone dropped it in a muddy muddy uh, puddle. And I haven't really found blends. I don't know what to smoke in it. I thought, wow, I'll smoke some Englishes in it. And that didn't really work out for me too well. I got, I got a lot of pipes from my Virginias. I tried some aromatics in here. Nothing really... Didn't really seem to be working for me. I couldn't find a blend that smoked well in it. And this blend smokes so well in this pipe. So, I'm happy about that, too. <laughs> mm. What else can I tell you? I guess that's it for, for the tobacco, maybe. Um, I kept leaving. I had some notes about it. I kept leaving them at home. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, it's a good, robust, robust blend. I like the way you can play with it.
and sort of tease out different flavors. You can really bring out the darkness in it and you, you can bring out the lightness in it. And if you're really good, you can really draw out the sweetness in it from time to time. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was telling you, so this is um, the statue behind me. I mentioned in a couple videos back about the Jewish cemetery. That right here in the center of town was a statue of Lenin. And uh, when they tore down Lenin, hmm, they found a bunch of uh, Jewish gravestones. Well, instead of doing anything about that, they just uh, put up their own guy. <laughs> and uh, to this day, there's no plaque or anything like that. You can just read about it in the old newspapers and stuff like that. Just sitting here watching the pigeons. Well fed, I might say. Little fatties. stocked up for winter I guess <laughs> since I lost all my weight <laughs> from the accidents and surgeries and stuff, there they go I lost so much weight so fast and my body is totally not used to it and I'm freezing all the time <laughs> wear this hat at home people laugh at me And sitting is not so comfortable anymore. I feel all my bones, my butt, my butt bones. <laughs> I have a little pillow I sit on at home now. <laughs> so pathetic. Uh, and sleeping is lay down on my side and my knees are, uh, what do you say in English? They're like hitting, rocking against each other. Clink, 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 clink. <laughs> all my padding's gone. <laughs> I gotta think, well, gotta lift that leg up a little higher because my knees can't be touching. No, not higher, maybe lower. No, lower's not comfortable. Higher. No, higher's not comfortable. Roll over on the other side, same thing. <laughs> oh, another thing about the tobacco. <laughs> it's got a nice nicotine uh, hit to it. Maybe it's because I smoke it a lot as I'm walking and Lunting tends to have a lot more, I don't know, adverse or accidental inhalation, I think. Um, just as you're walking, uh, there's something about it. Uh, maybe not, maybe it's just the tobacco blend itself. Not a whole lot of blends do I, as I'm smoking, I realize, hey, I'm feeling a little nicotine there. This one does, and it's just right. Okay, guys. Mm. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. And uh, I wish that you would love truly, as always. Bye-bye.